King David is perhaps best known for two distinct events. His defeat of the giant Goliath, armed with only a shepherd's sling, and his adultery with Bathsheba and the subsequent death of her husband. With our readings in 2 Samuel this week, look in detail at this second event. David succumbing to temptation. His attempt to disguise the pregnancy. Uriah's convenient death in battle. The showdown with the prophet Nathan. The curse placed on David's family that culminates years later with Absalom's rebellion. But what does any of this have to teach us beyond, say, if your neighbour is sunbathing in the nude, don't be a voyeur, or if you're stupid enough to commit adultery with another bloke's wife, don't make things even worse by ordering a contract hit on the husband. Well, the key to understanding this story is to appreciate the opportunities and the responsibilities afforded by godly leadership. When David is focused on loving and serving the Lord, his people follow his example and the nation thrives. But when he abuses and corrupts the power entrusted to him, trouble falls on him like a ton of bricks. You know, the Bible is sometimes accused of being misogynistic, but at no point is the finger pointed at Bathsheba. David had the power. David carries the responsibility. Now, Jesus sums this up when he says, From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. From the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. Or, to borrow a modern meme, With great power comes great responsibility. Remember that, Pete. Remember that. Of course, we can all learn from the failures of men and women in the Bible. David's repentance results in some heartfelt poetry. And indeed, our readings this week include Psalm 51 and Psalm 32. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Beautiful words. Well, our Old Testament readings this week are definitely on the dark side. We have betrayal, arrogance, murder, rape, more murder, arson, more betrayal, and rebellion. One might hope that the New Testament readings would be a little bit more uplifting, and yet Mark pulls no punches in describing the final days of Jesus' ministry. We have a fig tree withered by a curse. The forced eviction of traitors from the temple courts. Some nasty theological questions intended to trap the respondent. Prophecies about natural disasters and brothers betraying brothers. A violent arrest with swords, clubs and a sliced off ear. One betrayal and one denial, and an awful lot of people fleeing into the darkness. Psychological and physical abuse, an agonising death, and a missing corpse. It's pretty dark, really, isn't it? Well, this is the third gospel that we have now completed during this Bible in a Year programme. And as you read these very familiar chapters, Look out for the light shining through all that darkness. The hope of forgiveness. The hope of renewed purpose. The promise of God's power poured out. The hope 
of the age to come and the hope of life eternal. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. God bless.